In section 3.4, we will talk about the composition of functions. By definition, given two functions f and g, the composite function or composition denoted by f, this circle g, which does not mean multiplication, that circle means composition, read as f composed with g, is defined by f composed with g of x equals to f of g of x. So essentially, what we're doing here is we have an inner function which we are evaluating first, and the value of that function becomes the input for the outer function, which in this case is f. So let's take a look at some examples. Here we are given two different graphs. The first graph represents the function f of x. The second graph represents the function g of x. First, we want to find f of g of 4. So in this case, our inner function is g of 4. And on the side, I am going to find the value of, g of, value of g of 4. So remember that the number inside the parentheses, this is your input. So we want to find the value of the function g when we have an input of 4. So first, let's find the graph for, for g of x, which is the second graph. And our input, our x value is 4. So let me go to my input, or x value of 4, which is there. The corresponding point on the graph is this point. So when the value of x is 4, the output, or the y value, is 0. So g of 4 has a value of 0. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rewrite f of g of 4, but now I'm going to replace g of 4 with its output, or its value. So the g of 4 gets replaced with 0. Now the output for, for the g function g of 4 is 0, so this is your output. This becomes the input for the f function. So we want to find what is f of 0. So now let's take a look at the graph for f of x. And our input for f is now 0, which is the output for g. So we find where does f have an x value of 0, which is here. The corresponding point on the graph is this point. So f of 0 equals to 2, which means f of g of 4 has a value of 2. And for proper notation, we would write f of g of 4 equals to 2 and not just 2. Next, let's find g of f of 1. So first, we are going to evaluate our inner function. We want to find out what is the output of f when the input is 1. So let me work that out on the side. I want to find what is f of 1, so my function f has an input or x value of 1. So I'm going to go to my graph of f of x, and I will find the x value of 1, and go to the corresponding point on the graph, which is this point. So f of 1 equals to 5. In other words, when the input of f is 1, there's an output of 5. So we are going to replace f of 1 with its output which is 5, so now we have g of 5. The output for f of 1 becomes the input for the g function. So for g of 5, I'm going to locate the graph for g of x, and I'm going to go to my x value of 5, which is here. And my corresponding point is that point, which has an output of 2. So when x equals 5, um, the output, or y equals 2, for the function g of x. So once again, g of f of 1 equals to 2. So to simplify this, always find the value of the inner function first. Once we have the value for the inner function, use that as the input for the outer function. OK, let's, let's do the next one. We want to find f of f of 5. So on the side here, I'm going to find out what is f of 5. So our input is 5, which means the x value is 5. For the f function, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the corresponding output, or the y value, is 1, 2, 3, 4. So in the f function, when the input is 5, the output is 4. Now the output for f becomes the input for the outer function, which again is also f. So this time, we're going to replace f of 5 with this output, which is 4. And now we want to find what is f of 4? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. f of 4 has a value of 1. So f of f of 5 equals to 1.
last one, we first want to find out what is g of 3. So we want to find the input for the g function when the, uh, or the output for the g function when the input or the x value is 3. So let's find x equals 3 on the g function, and the corresponding point is this one, which has an output of 1. So g of 3 equals to 1. The output of the inner function, which is 1, becomes the input for the outer function. So the outer function is also g, which means we now want to find what is g of 1. So we want to find the output for the g function when the input is 1, which is this point right there when x equals to 1. And the corresponding point on the graph is here, which is 4. So g of 1 equals to 4. Let's take a look at the next example. We are now, instead of graphs, given two different functions. We have f of x equals to 9x minus 1, and g of x equals to negative 3. Notice that this is a constant function, which means no matter what the input is for g, the output will always be negative 3. And we want to calculate in part a what is f comp composite g of negative 10. OK, so first, let's write this using our proper notation f composed with g of x equals to f of g of x. So f composed with g of negative 10, this equals to f of g of negative 10. First, let's evaluate the inner function. Our inner function is g of negative 10. So on the side here, I will write down g of negative 10. And I want to find the output of g when the input is negative 10. Now, g of x is a constant function, which means no matter what the input is, the output will always be negative 3. So g of negative 10 has an output of negative 3. The output for the g function becomes the input for the f function. So now we want to find what is f of negative 3. To find f of negative 3, I'm going to take the f function, which is f of x equals to 9x minus 1, and I'm going to replace the input with negative 3. And recall that the x value, it always gets replaced by the input. So instead of 9x minus 1, I have 9 times negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 27 minus 1, or negative 28. And for, so f of negative 3, that equals to negative 28. But for proper notation, I'm going to write f composed with g of negative 10 equals to negative 28. So as a recap, we first evaluated the inner function g of negative 10, this part. And g of negative 10 gave us a value of negative 3. And then we said, what is f of negative 3? By replacing the input for x with negative 3. And we got negative 28 as our final output. Next one, we have g composed with f of negative 7. So first, I'm going to write this as g of f of negative 7. This becomes the inner function. First, let's evaluate f of negative 7. So I'll, I'll work that out on the side here. f of negative 7, it means that we will take the f function and replace the x value with the input, which is negative 7. So instead of 9x minus 1, I have 9 times negative 7 minus 1. This is negative 63 minus 1, which is negative 64. So f of negative 7 has an output of negative 64. Now the output for the outer inner function becomes the input for the outer function. So f of negative 7 has an output of negative 64. And now I just bring the g down. So we have g of negative 64. On the other side here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to replace f of negative 7 with negative 64. And you can do it either way, whatever makes more sense to you. For g of negative 64, we are going to replace the x value with negative 64. But because g is a constant function, no matter what the value of x is, the output will always be negative 3. So g of negative 10 is negative 3. g of negative 64 is also negative 3. So our final answer, g composed with f of negative 7 equals to negative 3. Let's do one more. And 
um, the next couple of problems we will uh, go over in class. So I'll do one of each, and the rest of these we'll go over in class. So first, let's find f composed with g of 0. So our inner function is g of 0, which means we want to find what is f of g of 0. So for g of 0, I'll work this out on the side. I'm going to take the function g of x equals to 4x minus 3 and replace the input with 0. So I have g of 0, which means this x value gets replaced with the input. 4 times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So g of 0 has a value of negative 3. And then we simply bring down the f. So we want to find out what is f of negative 3. And I'm doing it two different ways, so you can choose which way is uh, makes more sense to you. To figure out what is f of negative 3, we are going to take the f function and replace each x value with a negative 3. Now I recommend putting this in a calculator um, all at once, but if you were to do it by hand, you do have to follow the order of operations. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. So we have negative 3 times 9 minus 5 times negative 3 plus 9. Uh, this is negative 27 plus 15 plus 9. And if we add this, we get uh, negative 27 plus 15. That's a negative 9. Negative, uh, or sorry, negative 12. And negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3, which is our final output. So for proper notation, we would write that f of g of 0 equals to negative 3. The rest of these we will do in class. Let's take a look at our next example. Now, what if we have this kind of a case where we don't have an input for g, instead we just have a variable. So here, in all these other examples, we had an input to plug in. But in this example, we just have a g of x. So first, let's write that using proper notation. We have f composed with g of x. That's our inner function. So we have f of g of x. Normally, we would take whatever input we have and plug that into the g function. But we don't have an input. We don't have a value that's an, a number. So instead, we are going to replace g of x with its equivalent expression, which is negative 4x plus 6. When a numerical value for the input is not given, we replace g of x with its equivalent expression, which in this case is negative 4x plus 6. Now we want to find what is f of negative 4x plus 6. So in the f of x function, which is f of x equals to 5x squared minus 2x minus 3, we are going to take each x value and replace that with the input, which is negative 4x plus 6. So I'm going to move this to the side here. Instead of 5x squared, remember the x value gets replaced with the input. So we will have 5 times negative 4x plus 6 squared minus 2. And the x gets replaced with the input, which is negative 4x plus 6. And finally, we bring down the negative 3. Let's simplify this. Order of operations says negative 4x plus 6 to the second power is negative 4x plus 6 times negative 4x plus 6. And the rest of this I'm going to write down the way it is. And remember that when you square an expression, you do have to write that out twice. Now this next part I'll do quickly. We have a 16x squared. We have a negative 24 and a negative 24. That is a negative 48x. 6 times 6 is 36 minus 2 times 4x plus 6 minus 3. 5 times 16, that is an 80x squared. 5 times negative 48, that is a negative 240x. 5 times 36 is 160. Negative 2 times 4x is negative 8x. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. And we have a negative 3. Now all that's left to do is combine our like terms. So we have our 80x squared. Negative 240 minus 8, that is a negative 248x. 160 minus 12 minus 3, that should give us a 145. And for proper notation, we are going to state that f composed with g of x equals 2 80x squared minus 248x plus 145. Okay, the rest of these examples we will do in class.